Amen and amen, brothers and sisters. The Lord is good. He has brought us into the course, the new course 108 Marketplace Ministry, where the Lord wants to teach us something that is so important. Christian religion demonized the marketplace, calling it secular space. Christian religion exalted full-time ministry to a very dangerous extent. A lot of people think that if you are not in full-time, you are not wearing a robe, you are not wearing a cap, you are not wearing a skull cap, you are not sitting on a throne, then you are not a minister. The Lord said no, no. At any given time, only few people will be called to full-time work and not those robes and all those things they borrowed from Rome. As a matter of fact, it's time for Pentecostals and Evangelicals to crawl, eat humble pie, go to Rome, bow before the Pope and say, we are so sorry. Because what are you protesting? What is it, What are Christians, Protestants protesting again when they borrow everything of Rome, the cathedral pattern of Rome, the robes of Rome, the clergy of Rome, so the Lord wants us to understand that he has in the earth dream, he has a plan. One day the Lord opened our eyes, it was so awesome. He said, how many people received the baptism of the Holy Spirit the first day, the first Pentecost experience? 120. Out of the 120, how many were called to full-time ministry? Only 12. That Yeshua, in part, apart from Judas and then Matthias who placed him, all the other 108, what do, what do you think they were doing? They include people like Barnabas, people like Joseph of Arimantia, people who were in marketplace ministry, people who were serving the Lord as disciples, but they were not called to full-time ministry inside church building. Brothers and sisters, open your heart to receive what the Lord is saying in this cause. And I won't say this to you. If the church catches the revelation, the systemic poverty that is crippling the ability of the church to function in our generation will be eliminated, yet he's not calling anybody. You are in business. You say you are in marketplace ministry. You have a profession. You, are, you, you, you have investments. Then you are marketplace ministry. No, it's not automatic. You are in marketplace ministry when you are first a disciple of Yeshua. Your life is laid out for him, and he uses you to enter into that space in the marketplace to do exploits for his glory, and, and you are not making the profit for your belly, but for his assignment and his purpose. This is the basic thesis, and today we're going to dwell on this. I'm going to be it when we're going to discuss Lesson 7, Kingdom Economics Part 2, The Essential Nature of Kingdom Economics. Let's pray. Father in heaven, have your way and just feed us with your word. Challenge our thought patterns. Renew our minds. Transform our hearts and bring about such a transformation. Help us to understand and walk in this truth in Yeshua's name. Amen. Brothers and sisters, the spiritual of kingdom economics to the worldly system can be summed as thus. It is about yielding to Jehovah Jireh to use you as instrument of manifesting his love and care for his saints and for humanity. Yeshua explained in one of the shortest statements he made to Paul the Apostle, Acts 20, 35, it is more blessed to give than to receive. So it's about entering the blessed life where you become a channel through which the Lord uses to bless others. Kingdom economics, therefore, is not, just, it's not about acquiring money or assets, no. We can't preach that heresy. It's not about accumulating more blessings for yourself and calling yourself blessed because you have more money, your stomach is protruding, and you have all the latest toys. No. It is about a life of yielding to and allowing Elohim to use you as a channel of adding value to the lives of others. And those who are so yielded are proved first by death of self and complete submission to the will and divine purpose. In kingdom economics and the marketplace ministry, which functions within its ambit, accumulation of riches or profit is not the primary motive 
at all for entering into enterprise. As we said before, it is to add value to people, take responsibility in, you know, in keeping the earth dream as Elohim desires. Many times religion wants us to forget the basics of the gospel. Genesis 1, Elohim created heaven and earth, the earth as extension of his kingdom in heaven, and he gave it to men. And in Genesis 2, 15, we are told he gave it to man to dress it and to keep it. And the marketplace ministry is to empower us back with that ability to dress and to keep. Like we told in Genesis 1, from 26, Elohim created man in his own image and likeness to exercise dominion over the things in the earth realm. Well, what has happened? Because the Christian religion didn't understand the essentials of the kingdom, he preached poverty in such a way that became self-own goal, debilating. And you find church Christians are so incapacitated in a modern world, unable to do anything, unable to fulfill the Great Commission, unable to do anything. But the Lord says the gospel of the kingdom will confer back on us the capacity to begin to do what Genesis 1, 26, 29 says as a dress rehearsal for when Yeshua will return to rule over the earth dream and restore universal wellness and wholeness but even now, the Lord wants to show a tincture of that, a picture of that, so the people of the world can know that, yes, Yeshua reigns. So, brothers and sisters, it's so important to understand that the Lord will want to empower us with capacity, yet he wants us to first be consecrated to him. You are called to the marketplace. He wants you to be a disciple first. Not just a churchgoer, not just a believer. He wants you to move from believing on him for bread and butter for your what you need to become a follower of him who empty yourself of yourself and in taking the will of the Father and allow the will of the Father to power you. Matthew 6, 24 to 26. Matthew 10, 37 to 39. Make him first, not your business. Not the family. Make him first. And when he's first, then he can use the vessel. So those who are approved in the realm of consecration, placing Elohim first, and living under the sovereign rule of Yeshua, led by Holy Spirit in all things they do, investment, business decisions, such people are those he can trust to handle wealth without backsliding. And if you are not dead to self and you seek wealth, Wealth will become your God. He will exercise dominion over you and you backslide. It has been proved there are many people who are good Christians, do the serving the Lord faithfully. Money comes in and then money comes in. They seek more money. They seek more money. Before you know it, they put the Lord aside. No more time to pray. No more time for faith. No more time for warfare. They just have all they need all around them. They behave like that man who wanted to make more and more investment. So the Lord is saying that it is people who are dead to self that he can give what he promised Peter when Peter asked him in Matthew chapter 19, verse 27, Behold, we are forsaken all and follow thee. What shall we have? He told them that they who have left all and followed him, that is the twelve, in the regeneration when the Son of Man shall sit in the throne of his glory, he shall also sit they will also sit in 12 thrones judging the 12 tribes of Israel. But there's something he said in verse 29 that is not often emphasized. And everyone that are forsaken houses or brethren or sisters or father or mother or wife or children or lands for my name's sake, wow, shall receive an hundred and shall inherit everlasting life. That is to say, come to a place of absolute consecration where the Lord is everything to you and you are dead to self, not desiring anything of yourself. You are just like a soldier, attention before your commanding officer. You are ready to be deployed left or right, front or back, and no, no opinion of your own. It is such people the Lord can give the hundredfold and knowing that they will do all his will with the hundredfold, it will not consume them. 
It is such people the Lord says in Matthew 6, 33, seek first the kingdom and his righteousness. All other things shall be added to you. They are not promised to everybody. It's for those who seek first the kingdom. Who will come under the sovereign rule of Yeshua. Give him right away. This is why being in the marketplace is a rare privilege. All those who allowed Elohim God to use them in the marketplace had this distinguishing mark. All of their beings, all of their lives were poured out like a drink offering to the Lord. He empowered and used them to fulfill his divine purpose. Such was the case with Joseph, the son of Jacob in Israel. I mean, in Egypt, Daniel in Babylon, Esther, you know, in the kingdom of Medo-Persia, Nehemiah, Zerubbabel, and a host of witnesses who he used in the public space. Therefore, we need to say again what we said at the beginning, that the Christian runs a business, is in employment, in the public service, or a professional, does not make that person a marketplace minister. And those who are in business of employment to gain wealth or for their own purposes may be slaves of mammon, the abomination of Babylon. The principality Satan sets over law, you know, causes men to love money for its own and then manipulates their mind. Their God is their belly. Though they may shout the loudest hallelujah and give testimony in church, the Lord bless me. He gave me breakthrough. No, your belly bless you. Your ambition bless you. There are blessings that are not from the Lord. Philippians 3, Paul said, Hey, be in verse 17. Brethren, be followers together of me and mark them which works as you have us for an example for many walk of whom I told you often and now tell you even weeping that they are the enemies of the cross of Yeshua, whose God, whose end is destruction, whose God is their belly, and whose glory in their shame, who mind earthly things. Paul was not speaking of unbelievers, he was speaking of ministers, he was speaking of Christians, whose God ruled them. Their belly became their God. So marketplace is serious, kingdom ministry. In First Timothy chapter 6, Paul said in verse 6, the godliness with contentment is great gain, for we brought nothing into the world, and it is certain we can carry nothing out. Having food and raiment, let us be there with content, but there that will be rich. If your motive in going into the marketplace is to be rich, there that will be rich fall into temptation and a snare and into many foolish and hurtful lust, which drown men in destruction and perdition. For the love of money is the root of all evil, which some coveted after have erred from the faith, have erred from the faith, and pierced themselves through with many sorrows. So let money never be the determinant of the profession you go into. Let it not be the determinant of the business you go into. Let it not be why you are in the marketplace. Men and brethren, to stack up wealth for yourself and invest in gain more and more in yourself, it creates a situation where one can be selfish and self-centered as 1 John 2, 9 and 10. 9 to 11 says, and 1 John 3, 10 all the way to 22 say, you know, where you have money, but the money cannot affect anybody. Nobody has a testimony of being affected. The care of people, you are unconcerned, you are cold, people are suffering. No. James 2 says, you shall have judgment in verse 13 without mercy that showeth no mercy, and mercy rejoices against judgment. He said, what does it profit, my brethren, though a man say he has faith and have not works, can faith save him? If a brother or sister be naked and destitute of daily food, and one of you say to him, depart in peace, uh, be ye warmed and filled, notwithstanding you have not, you give them not those things which are useful to the body, what does it profit? Even so, faith, if it has not works, is dead. And I'm not talking about the people who throw people over the internet, they, they flood your YouTube, they flood your WhatsApp, they flood your Facebook with requests and show you all kinds of pictures. I'm not talking about those people. A genuine Christian doesn't go begging publicly. Genuine Christian who trusts the Lord will never make anybody's God to now begin to plead with you, give me this if you are dying. No, but the Lord has made a way. He has made provision. That those he empowers is to use them as his extended hand to touch lives of others. 
as we're going to see. If only those who embrace the divine concept of kingdom economics, it's only them that can refer themselves as marketplace ministers on assignment for the king of kings where he planted them. And we need to say this. Most of those the Lord used were people he called. Check the sphere of influence of Yeshua, his immediate circle. Andrew and Peter, James and John, in Matthew chapter 7, he called them. Follow me and make you fishers of men. They left all, followed him. Check all the others. Check Matthew, was in receipt of custom, an official of the IRS of those days, or HMROC, in the UK. I said, come. I want him to be my biographer. I didn't tell him, I just said, come. He left everything, followed him. Why? Because the marketplace, listen, you first have to go through that narrow gate, that narrow gate of discipleship, of enthroning Yeshua in. When you enthrone him, you are safe. When you enthrone him, mammon cannot have any rule over you. When you enthrone him, the Lord can put uncommon wealth in your hand and you see it as an instrument of service. So it's very important, brothers and sisters, to come unto Yeshua, as he said in Matthew 11, 28 to 30. Come unto me, all ye that labor and heavy laden, and I will give you rest. The Lord has not asked us to go and labor for wealth. John 6, 27. Labor not for the meat which perisheth. Don't burn yourself out. Don't burn the candle of your life out at two ends because you want to make that. You want to make that money. You don't give your body any rest. Nothing. Your mind, no rest. You just squeeze yourself. He says in John 6, 27, Labor not for the meat which perisheth, but for that meat which endureth unto everlasting life, which the Son of Man shall give unto you. For him, Elohim the Father, has sealed. It's so important to get it right. So people don't just say, oh, I'm a marketplace minister. No, you may not be if you don't get this understanding. That's why the Lord is giving this training. This training is one of the shorter courses. It's probably maximum of maybe 10, 15, 10 to 15 courses, in, uh, lessons in all. But the idea is that the Lord wants to raise a group of ministers who he has trained and prepared and then unleash them into the marketplace. Men and brethren, one weekend years ago, went on a trip to Italy. And across the length and breadth of Italy, we saw some strange things. What was happening many years ago? A pastor who was driving us explained, the Chinese have come buying up old factories that are closed down, buying up. So go to large swaths of Italy today, Chinese factories, Chinese warehouses, whole villages and all that. And we see something interesting. They began to integrate themselves. They have a system that is integrated and they produce, and they import, and they just there is done in many other Western nations. And the Lord showed us something. They have an economic model, which they believe is superior to the Western economic model. And so, across the world, they've been pursuing their own thing, their own medicine, Chinese medicine, everything. People ignore them, but today, everywhere in the world, you see them in Chinese medicine, you see them in the military, you see them in the hardware, software, you see them in almost every sphere. You see them in education. Ignored. But because they stuck to their, what they got from their forefathers according to their culture. The Lord is saying to Christians, can we allow his word to embed in us the culture of the kingdom, understanding of the kingdom, the principles and precepts of the kingdom, and allow the Lord to really change us, transform us? Many years ago, people used to laugh at a hey, Muslim, nothing great for it. Look at what is going on today. Dubai has become the center of the world in a way. People are flocking. Qatar, small nation, mighty. Influence above its pay grade. Why? They went on to pursue what 
They believe the God all over the world today. They're now introducing Islamic banking, which says you shan't take profits. You shan't take usury. It's given to you so that you can develop your business and pay back the capital so that others can get it. They believe it from their religion. And look at how they are fervent about it. They've introduced it in several countries today, Islamic banking. It's only Christians. We talked about Jews in the previous lesson, how they have made it for themselves. It's only kingdom citizens who have not allowed the word of the Lord to be properly understood and, and internalized to the point where it transforms us and makes us what we ought to be. Let's not forget the Lord said in Matthew chapter 5 from verse 13 to 16, you are the salt of the earth. It is us the Lord wants to use to preserve the earth from corruption, to add flavor to the earth ring. It's us, he said, you are the light of the world. We are the city set on a hill. Kingdom citizens are to show the world how the Lord wants this earth to be lived. And so the Lord is saying to us that we are to be people who, when we get into contact with anybody, anywhere, there's change by the principle of spiritual osmosis. The stronger draws the weaker. And his strength in us draws others. So people come to behold the glory of the Lord through what they see in us. Matthew 13, 33. Another parable speaking unto them. The kingdom of heaven is like unto leaven, which a woman took and hid in three measures of meal until all were leavened. Kingdom economics is what will get us there, through the marketplace. And I have another lesson on this, where the Lord brings forth about 11 or so points, 10 or 11 points, that if we grab it along with this lesson and the previous lesson, anyone he called to the marketplace, you're going to succeed exponentially, not by mind, not by power, but by his spirit. Please would you share this video and let brothers and sisters come to understand the Lord's plan for us, especially those he's called to the marketplace. By way of assignment, please share four things you learned from this lesson. Number two, what personal challenge did you receive from this lesson? Number three, in the light of these truths that we shared here, can a Christian who is in business or the profession or employment or in public service, can such a person be called a marketplace minister if that person is selfish, self-centered, tight-fisted, cares only about profit? Can such a person be said to be a marketplace minister? And please explain. So we're going to pray now. And by the grace of the Lord, the next lesson, the Lord will bring forth something that will make our understanding complete. And then we will now go into certain areas like the five, the, the fivefold in application in the marketplace. And those who the Lord is calling to hybrid ministry calls you to the marketplace, yet gives you the ability to preach, to teach, the ability to disciple and do all things and you are everywhere, left, right, and center, you are there by his grace, by his spirit. Let's pray. Father in heaven, thank you for what you are sharing with us. Lord, we pray that nobody will push it back. Rather, let everybody open up, receive your word to renew the mind, transform the heart, and use your servants in the marketplace. Awake them from sleep, arouse them from slumber, and Lord, teach them, instruct them, and unleash them to do what you have ordained to be done to your own glory and praise. Let these words bear fruit 30-fold, 60-fold, 100-fold, and let your name be glorified. Thank you for answering our prayer. In Yeshua Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen.